Hello everyone here with HouseOfSparky.com. He's Kevin Redfern. I'm Matt Venezia here at Sun Devil Stadium following a really tough loss from the Sun Devils against the Eastern Michigan Eagles 30 to 21. Kevin, a game that we were not really expecting to go this way. A lot of things to dive in and talk about, but the most notable is how the rushing attack of the Eagles really dominated this contest. After Taylor Powell, the starting quarterback for the Eagles, went down with an injury, Austin Smith comes in and leads a rushing attack with the help of Samson Evans, a tailback for the Eagles, and over 300 total yards on the ground from that EMU team here today, and the Sun Devils simply just didn't have an answer. Yeah, and it was the game of Samson Evans, and like you said, the run attack. And like Herm Edwards just mentioned in his post-game presser, the Eastern Michigan offensive line dominated. They handled the ASU defensive line the whole game, running for positive yards on almost every play. If you look at these two teams, the box score, and you take away the two names and the player names, you think ASU took care of business. They did their bread and butter and ran the ball. That's not what happened. The Eagles took care of business tonight. And if I may, Kevin, it's also worth talking about the line of scrimmage. The Sun Devils simply just were buried when it came to trying to get the ball up ahead of the offensive line. And it was just something really notable that even the offensive line of the Eagles made it tough on the D-line of ASU. Yeah, it came down to overpowering the defensive line and like Coach Edwards just said, gap integrity from the defense. It didn't sound like the ASU coaches were satisfied with the defensive line and linebackers' ability to fill those holes in the run game. And it's also worth noting that this has been an issue coming into this contest. The Sun Devils finally got their first sack of the season from the defensive line, and it comes in an effort today where not much else on the defensive line was really even worth noting or talking about. Something else that is worth talking about, though, Kevin, is the penalties. And in bad situations, they occurred here tonight. And it seemed like at Okie State last weekend in Stillwater, you saw it there firsthand. We thought that issue was dealt with and put to bed, but it was a problem here tonight at Sun Devil Stadium. Well, penalties have been an issue for the last couple years under Herm Edwards. And like you said, last week looked to be a marginal improvement and what Edwards said were the competitive penalties, the holdings, less so the false starts and the offsides. Tonight, though, we saw a little bit of everything. There were false starts, there were holdings. Elijah Badger with a crucial unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on offense. Everything was there. So safe to say the improvements have not been drastic over the last two years. And this all comes right when Pac-12 season is getting underway next weekend. The Utah Utes, who just took down Fresno State earlier today by a nice big margin, they'll be here at Sun Devil Stadium for the opening contest for the Devils in the Pac-12. And I mean, just examining what happened in this non-conference schedule, the Sun Devils go one and two. They dominate NAU on opening night, but pretty much everything else was pretty lackluster. Yeah, and with ASU and their conference schedule, Eastern Michigan obviously was supposed to be one of the winnable games. Now you go with the next three weeks being Utah, USC, and a pretty good Washington team. So very real chance ASU goes into their bye week at one and five or two and four. Not ideal for the Sun Devils. Absolutely, and you know that Washington team had a big win against Michigan State earlier today up there in Seattle. So the Sun Devils have a lot to look over and Herm Edwards said tomorrow it's just going back to work and trying to figure out looking at the tape what exactly went wrong. But from this moment forward it's just tough to look at seeing that the Sun Devils really just look flat in pretty much every facet. The only good thing to talk about though from the Sun Devils was the fact that they ran the ball pretty decently well. X Valade a 45 yard rushing touchdown and Daniel Nogata got some carries as well. Yeah, I, the balance of them was really impressive as always. And Gata, I think he broke off 30 or 40 plus yards on his first three carries. It's a great combo, but we can all say at the same time, it's not enough. Offensively, there needs to be more generated for the Sun Devils, but they do have a nice foundation with the running backs. So that's all there is to note and speak of for now, as the Sun Devils, like we said, have a lot to do, a lot of homework and a lot of studying of the tape before the Utes, Cameron Rising, one of the best quarterbacks in the Pac-12, come into Tempe next weekend. But for now here at Sun Devil Stadium, the House of Sparky crew has you covered with what went down here as the Eastern Michigan Eagles got it done against the Sun Devils 30-21 to in upset fashion here in Tempe. But for now, this has been Kevin Redfern, and I'm Avenizia for HouseofSparky.com.